Item number SCP-3907. Index War Horse. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3907 and the field surrounding it are to be enclosed by a 125 meter by 125 meter perimeter fence, with at least one part of the fence obscured from view at all times. All SCP-3907 events are to be observed by on-site staff, and any abnormalities are to be reported at once. Description SCP-3907 is an oak table dating back to 1908. Set with seven chairs, a tablecloth, and various white porcelain dinnerware. SCP-3907 is impervious to all damage or wear, being in a typically pristine condition for its age. SCP-3907's primary anomalous effect is shown during activation events, in which SCP-3907-1 through-5 manifest in the chairs surrounding SCP-3907. Activation events follow no set pattern, and seemingly happen at random. SCP-3907-1 through-5 refer to the five humanoid entities that manifest sitting at SCP-3907. No anomalous effects other than the manifestation around SCP-3907 have been observed. The entities don British Army uniforms, circa 1915. Gathered from conversations, entities display expansive knowledge of and experience with the British Army, often describing tales of their exploits in various British military campaigns ranging from 1880 through 1915. During activation events, SCP-3907-1 through-5 will converse and drink from the dinnerware on SCP-3907, only stopping when interrupted by SCP-3907-6. SCP-3907-6 refers to a humanoid entity riding a horse. SCP-3907-6 wears the same uniform as all other SCP-3907 entities, albeit with significant jarring and blast damage in the lower regions. In all recorded SCP-3907 activation events, SCP-3907-6 begins galloping at 18 km per hour from a point on the horizon that no human is viewing. It will invariably head towards SCP-3907 and jump over the object and the entities dining at it. SCP-3907-6 jumping over the table and landing will end the activation event. Addendum 1. Example of an SCP-3907 activation event. SCP-3907-2. Gentlemen. SCP-3907-3. Evening, John. Boys. Fine evening we're having tonight. Weather's just right. Reminds me of nights as a child in York. SCP-3907-4. Nothing will top the weather in the Transvaal. SCP-3907-5. Christ alive, that was infernal. If the Damboas weren't trying to kill you, it seems that furnace of a land was. Alan. You like to talk up how bad South Africa was, but you wouldn't have lasted a minute in Afghanistan. Imagine, if you will, you shiver through a freezing night, only to be awoken to a ninety degrees day. Three men in your company are already dead from the runs, and half the food's been taken by locals. You then go on your patrol, wearing your bright red uniform against tan stone. All of a sudden, a million turbans pop out of the rocks above, and half of your group is dead. You try to return fire, but the bastards are halfway back to Kabul by the time you level your weapon. Please, Edward. You've never seen a thousand Orientals howling like terrors, charging down an alley with only a rifle and your wits separating you from them. I'd take Shanghai a million times before I took Flanders again. SCP-3907-1, who has been silent the entire time, speaks up. SCP-3907-1. I can't go back there. The group grows somber, holding back tears. I didn't mean to. I couldn't ever have known. I can't take this any more. Eh, it's okay, Murphy. None of us meant to. It's not your fault. He's dead. We all are, and it's because of me. I'm sorry. Murph, you couldn't have known that the grenade was prime. Men, stop. 
At this time, SCP-3907-6 manifests and begins its approach. Time's up, lads. Looks like it's time to return. See you in the trenches. SCP-3907-2 stands and raises his glass in a toast. To the fallen. SCP-3907-1 and SCP-3907-3 through-5 stand and raise their glasses. All in unison. To the fallen. SCP-3907-6 jumps over the table as the entities finish the toast. SCP-3907 returns to its inactive state.